today we are drawing water lilies and this is actually from the zoo that's a white tiger but you could draw whatever animal you want without any further ado let's get started we're going to start in pencil and end with watercolor so on your scene decide where your animal is i'm going to start with the head about that big okay and then i'm going to do the two little eyes and you could do any animal you want if you want to change yours to a puppy i think that's what i'm going to change mine to with a triangular nose and a little mouth that comes down like that. All right? Sometimes you're like, so, too big and yeah. small. Then instead of a tiger, which is a little more advanced, but if you want to do the tiger, pause it and look slowly and try to do the stripes around the head and the ears, that shape, mm -hmm. if you want to do a tiger. If not, are you guys on the triangle nose and yeah. the little mouth that comes down yeah, like yeah. that? If not, I'm gonna do a floppy ear dog, or you could do the ears in triangles straight up to turn yours into a cat. I'm gonna do a dog. Okay, sweet. Mm -hmm. So this is where if I've taught you how to do a puppy or any animal, including a bunny for Easter coming up, you can do that animal. I'm gonna do this animal called the axolotl. Oh, like let's see that axolotl. So you have the circle head to get started. I like how you got the little ears. Next, I'm gonna actually look at the tiger here, how the paws come down, because this dog has a paw. It's gonna come down, have a little paw there, and up. And then the other side, I'm gonna come down, and this, this little tiger's paw is bent inward, so I'm gonna kinda bend the paw inward, come up and have the back hind leg sticking out like this. Just like that, actually. Just like that. Ooh, that's really cute. And then instead of this tail going to the side, I'm gonna have this a happy, happy dog. Happy dog and have a little wag tail. All right, how you guys doing on your pets? Ooh, okay. looks good. Looks good, you got the shape of the body and your pet. When you're done with your pet, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. This is the creative part. I really love how they put it on a water lily. So if you see, instead of a circle going around like the letter O, we're gonna go sideways in that angle and have your animal sitting on and do your oval really light to get started, all right? Can you do it like that? See the paw is close to the end? So the paw is close to the end there. You're gonna come around and kind of do a sideways oval. And I like doing a little cut in it like it's a real lily floating, like a big lily pad. And instead of a flower on this lily pad, it's an animal. And so that's what makes this really creative and why people are buying this actual postcard at the Tampa Zoo. Ooh. Oh, nice job. So you got your little creative animal there. You got your dog and your lily, and it looks like it's flowing in the water. Next, you guys see how the lilies come right off the page? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do a stem right off the page. And this is how we're using a source, a resource, someone already looked at nature, and we're having something come right off the page. And that's called perspective. And it's gonna be big, because this, see how big that flower is? See the petal go up and down? Let's do one petal at a time. I'm gonna go up and down for one petal at a time. See that petal? Can I do these kind of oh, flowers? Oh, you can do that kind of flowers. You remembered our last lesson was the tulip, and this kind of has the zigzag up, down, up, it, down, up, down. Thing? Yes, and I liked how you have the middle of that flower with the zigzag. So that's another way if you don't want to do a petal at a time up and down like this. I really love how Carly is doing the zigzag look. And then in the back has a little bit like that. Then you can use the side of your pencil for a little more shading to stay in the lines. The stem. And then behind this flower, what is that guys? Another lily pad. You see it right there? Yeah. So now I'm going to look at that one. I'm going to do behind this flower a lily pad around it and if I could get you to do what's called layering, adding a layer behind another layer, it's gonna give your art more depth. Have it be like you could step into the scene a little more 3D. Ooh, I love how you're doing more of a sunflower over here with your, what's that creature? The axolotl. There you go, axolotl. And ooh, you're already adding on the other lilies over there. So right now we're just looking. I see a little reflection in the water here and adding maybe another uh, flower. I like the water lilies just have a what? A lily pad. I see you got that right there. And on the lily pad, this flower is kind of blooming, that flower right there. Can we do a blooming flower on the lily pad? How I teach you how to do lilies. Yeah, that one. As you go up and down, up and down. You remember how I taught you how to do lilies like this? Mm -hmm. A petal at a time and they come across like they're blooming. That's one way where my pencil keeps going to the middle is to do a blooming lily. Like that? Yes. 
That actually looks beautiful. Way to go. So we got yeah. a couple lilies. Yeah, I like how you did yours with the zigzag top and how they're all a little bit different and creative. Now that we got some lilies in the foreground, your animal in the background, do you guys see that line right there? What do we call that? Separating the sky and the land? Um, the hor uh, horizon, horizon line. line. Now I see a rock, I'm gonna do a bump and a horizon line behind the animal, just about up to his shoulder length is the horizon line. I saw, so, the, I saw the lily pad as 3D and I did 3D one. Ooh, nice, adding a little depth on there. So let's do the horizon line and maybe a hill coming down or a rocky area. All right, good job. I like how it's already I could step into the scene. Let's see that 3D lily pad again. Oh yeah, just like they have it here on the professional one. Now there's one more thing I want to do before we watercolor paint it. And do you guys see this stuff coming in and hanging down the yeah, trees? That's tree, called yeah. natural framing. Ooh, and I even see a little dragonfly. Instead of a dragonfly, I think it's way easier to add what? A bee. Oh, a bee bird. would be good. I like doing the V birds. And to do the hanging down tree, I try to do some limbs coming in from the side and down. Limbs coming from the side and down. And if I could teach you how to dab on, just like this, when we did trees one time, the little circles and dab on some leaves coming down, that natural framing will give it a little more 3D aspect where you could step into the scene. And that's called perspective. All right, so we got a little natural framing. We have our horizon line. We got a couple lilies. Are you guys ready to paint it? Mm -hmm. All right, so my assistant said for this video, they were gonna work fast with me, right, and paint it. I love how you're adding personal expression of clouds. And, ooh, what are you adding, Bryn, on I'm there? I'm doing the it? tree right now, but I'm gonna ooh. do a mountain over here. Oh, a mountain, and I see yeah, how Bryn I'm has a bee. Yeah, I'm doing the mountain, too. Awesome, a mountain majesty in the background. Sorry about that. All right, so even though we have a source, I love how you guys are using personal expression and things you love in art and adding your own details based on things you like. And I think I'm gonna add a waterfall behind mine because oh, you two inspired me. About to do. Oh yeah, well show me because I think as your art teacher, I know I taught you how to do a waterfall. Teach everybody how. That's right. You do a little rock where it's coming from and some lines down and some mist. I'm gonna do it. Perfect. I'm gonna do like a little cave right here. A cave in the background. So you guys are inspiring me. Next. That's awesome. All right, so once we've got a little bit of shading and some drips. details. Ooh, you're I'm doing the drip technique, which is really popular right now. And as soon as you guys are ready, I'm gonna add a couple more lily pads by doing some more ovals. And then I think we're gonna get ready to get painting this. Cause you guys, my helper said you were gonna paint it on my video lesson. I'm gonna do the zigzag tulip coming off the page there. All right, I think we're ready to paint. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, without any further ado, grab a brush, dunk it in your water. Let's move the colors down and decide Let's do your background first. What color sky are you gonna do? Um, I'm gonna do um, a periwinkle. Ooh, periwinkle, my favorite color. I'm gonna do oh. a, um, that would be a purple like, and blue. sunset. Ooh, a sunset. What color is your sunset gonna be? Pink, orange, and blue. Pink, orange, and or, blue. Actually, pink, purple, and orange. All right, so I'm Maybe using lots of, blue. hmm, what am I using to get this cloudy water. look? Yes, lots of water for the either circulation look for clouds or the control drip. I need a little more purple to get mine periwinkle. Now that you inspired me to use my favorite color. And I love how you're using a different color over here. Some of the colors you love, so everybody's be a little different. All right, so light blue and light purple is periwinkle. Can I finish my tree real quick? You can. I'm finished and then I'm doing having you guys do the background first. So then the sky will be setting, drying a little bit while we work on the foreground. So that way I could teach you how to dab on the little leaves like this, dab, dab, dab. All right, well, if you're done, you are ready to continue going. All right, so I'm doing the sky. I'm using water, having it lighter near the horizon line, darker up top. And don't forget to do what in the water? Reflect um, it, reflecting. right? Reflect the sky. Way to go, looking beautiful here. All right. I like your sparkly leaves. I'm not done yet, like of course it's the sun. Right, so circulation. We picked some good brushes for this though. These are the upper school Chinese landscape brushes that you guys use in upper level because they're a little more expensive, so you gotta take care of them. But do you like how it has a skinny end where you can stay in the lines and then it, with, you can go back and forth? Oh, we do, yeah, oh, we purple's do. right there. <laughs> you got it. That one. Purple. Right. 
So going back and forth, feathering or blending, going around the flowers. Ooh, good job staying in the lines. I love the peaceful scenes. How are you getting your favorite colors on there? Is that some of your favorite colors, pink and purple? Yeah. And some orange you got near the horizon? Not really. I think my favorite colors are blue and green. My favorite colors are blue and pink and like stuff. A lot of people like blue. I like purple though. Well, if we do the blue water, blue layer in the water, when we add the flowers, you want to make sure your flowers aren't blue, a different color than your water. Pink. Uh, yeah, pink would pop against green yeah. and blue. That's, a, that's, that's why that's... Oh, I can't or have Or red, green. yeah. I can't have green. You can't have green? For my tree. Why? Wait, I thought you said that. <laughs> no, I said against the green of the lily pads, pick a color in your flower that'll make it pop. You definitely, if you had a green sky, then you wouldn't want green on your oh, leaves. I did the bark of the tree green on accident. I'm doing some brown. Oh, good job staying in the lines. So that's what we're doing now. It's just like an art therapy color sheet. We're coloring in the lines. But with paint. But with paint. <laughs> paint Which brushes. I think is faster, right? Yeah, because yeah. there's a lot more. There's like, if you grab, well, grab a big paintbrush, there's... Mm -hmm. You could spread it faster than a skinny little color pencil staying in the lines, which the takes a little more work. Really fun and stuff, but it's not always the best thing to do. Right. Ooh, that just stopped there like a blob. All right. To end, since you guys are doing so amazing, wow. To end our lesson with painting in the lines, cleaning your brush between colors, wiping it off, maybe even having a scrap piece of paper, make sure your brush is clean. I definitely wanted to show you how to make army green. Do you remember how to make army green? Yes. Uh, yes. Green, oh, green and... Dark, green, blue. Or black, black, black. Isn't it black? Uh, orange or red. Uh, oh. Orange or oh, red yeah. with green, make an army green. Ooh, that's too much orange. That's a really dark green, but I kind of like it. Then you clean your brush and add some more green. Mm. Is this a good um, water thing? Ooh, that's a really good watercolor. Awesome. So as you're working on the water and staying in the lines, you're both doing amazing. I'm going to show you when you get your green, your army green, you go to the end and you kind of fray the end of your brush so it's kind of out of the lines like that. Fray is like a, a crazy hair day. Mm -hmm. And then you dab, dab, dab. Do you think that looks like leaves? That's the dab technique where it looks a little bit, right? See how it's frayed like that? A little more I like that. Purple look, in my water. Like, ooh, nice reflection. So when you're on your leaves, because I'm going to try to make this a short like and sweet that? video. Is that an army green? Yes. Army green. And then you dab it on like this. Yeah. You got it. And you already have some green on your tree because yeah, you were doing... Yeah, army green. Can I use some of yours? Of course. Sorry, I just painted on your hand okay. too. <laughs> At least we, we uh, it's washable watercolor. Oh, these look amazing. So that's where we have... Can I do my mountains? You can. You can paint your whole thing and go at your own pace at this time. And that's how we're gonna let the rest of the class do is just finish up at their own pace, working on staying in the lines, taking our time. I need to color my flower. Ooh, and probably my third grade class that stays in the media room is most likely gonna do this with Crayola markers and then use water to make the colors bleed yeah. out so it looks like a painting. Cause we I are- uh, flowers. Yeah. You're not allowed to paint in the, in the media room, yeah, right? Because it's too messy. But you guys will have the examples to show the class. All right. It keeps on bleeding out. Ooh, it is bleeding out because it's touching your background. Do you want to work on another part, let that dry? It actually looks nice bleeding out, but what you can do is wipe off this brush, Make sure the end is dry and go in between those areas like that and lift up some of the color. Mm -hmm. You want to try lifting some of the color up? Or you could dab it on with a tissue to lift some of the color. Can, uh, I need a tissue. Oh, tissue. I'm going to get one. Yes. So I'm going to say over and out from the lesson as we finish making ours coloring in the line using a resource. Thank you, my helpers. You did a beautiful artwork already and we're not even done.